Microbes outnumber all other species and make up most living matter. They're invaluable for humans to survive and thrive, and we're continually discovering how to exploit them, including genetically modifying them to produce medicines, food and fuel. The first organisms to be genetically modified were E. coli bacteria by Herbert Boyer and Stanley Cohen in 1973. E. coli is a common inhabitant of the human colon. It's simple to grow and can be easily manipulated and duplicated. Today, bacteria and yeast, which cause so many human diseases, are being genetically altered to help cure illness. Genetic engineering is really about adding things to microbes. It's about rewriting their instruction manuals to produce something different, perhaps something useful to us, like drugs. We're essentially turning them into tiny factories. One example is insulin, which should be produced naturally in the pancreas to regulate the amount of sugar in the blood. When it's not produced, we get diabetes. Previously, natural insulin was extracted from the pancreases of cow and pig carcasses in abattoirs but it's expensive and difficult to ensure an adequate supply. In the 1980s, scientists discovered how to produce human insulin by transplanting the genetic information for the human insulin hormone from a human cell into the DNA of the E. coli bacterium. This reprograms the bacteria to produce insulin in just the same way as they make their own proteins. In fact, the genetic modification of microbes is transforming our ability to combat all sorts of diseases. A very good example of this is lactobacillus. This is a bacterium that naturally lives in your gut. It protects you against urinary tract infections and other diseases. And this microbe is now being engineered as a possible treatment for HIV. We have high hopes for a new malaria treatment produced by genetically engineered bacteria and yeast that will be cheap enough to give to anyone who needs it in South America and Africa. As demand increases for alternatives to conventional fuels, scientists are hoping that genetically modifying microbes could also produce a sustainable solution to our energy needs. They want to use the bacteria and yeast to break down organic waste products like the stems, leaves and husks from crops and excrete biofuels like ethanol and butanol as their waste product. Ethanol has been heralded as a cleaner, greener fuel than petrol, and yeast naturally produces ethanol from sugars, an ability traditionally used to ferment beer. This has huge implications, since currently biofuel production uses starch crops like corn and sugar, which are extremely expensive. Microbes are also being genetically engineered into our clothing. Infusing clothes with bacteria or viruses may give them super properties, such as the ability to self-clean or naturally glow in the dark. So, the tag on your t-shirt may one day read 99% cotton and 1% E. coli. <laughs>